And now, today's message with Pastor Sean R. Moore on Faith on the Go. Now, I want to do a little bit of a review because it's been a few weeks, praise God. Amen. And uh, just want to kind of catch everybody up, make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I started a series many weeks back entitled The Nuts and Bolts uh, of Leadership. Praise God. So we talked about, you know, what leadership is. Leadership is influence. Leadership, it is the ability to obtain followers. If anyone says that they are a leader and no one is following them, then all they are doing is taking a walk. Amen. A leader is great not because of their ability, but because of their ability to empower other people. In Luke chapter 5, when Jesus called his first four disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, unto him, the Bible tells us that Jesus told them that if you will follow me, I will teach you how to catch men. In other words, what Jesus said is that if you follow me, I will teach you how to become leaders, how to use your influence to win people's hearts to serve me. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible tells us that we have been, that it has been committed onto us the ministry of reconciliation, that we as Christ's personal representatives ought to beg other individuals, implore other individuals, earnestly request of other individuals that they be reconciled back into favor with God. The door might have been closed in the Old Testament, but God has swung open the door of favor and now we can come boldly to the throne of grace and God wants to use his people today to use their influence to impact the lives of other people. And folks, I'm going to tell you the days of the superstar Christianity are over. Amen. It's over with, folks, being okay with seeing one person shine, another person shine, another person shine, the, the pastor, apostle, evangelist, or teacher shine. Amen. It's the time for the body of Christ to shine. And we're not supposed to be in the business of comparing lights to see who, brines, bright, who, who shines brighter, but we're supposed to be in the business of, of teaming up so that we don't just shine as several individual lights, but we shine as one big light. When the devil sees you, he sees you. He sees you. He sees you. He sees me. He sees you. And he doesn't know how many are coming at him. God wants to use his people and use their influence to impact the lives of other people. Now, we talked about how everything rises and falls on leadership. Faith Christian Center is where it is today because of the leaders that have emerged out of this congregation and have taken responsibility upon themselves to help this ministry fulfill its mission for being here. As a matter of fact, if you go back seven years, you know, from now five years, from now ten years, if we go back twelve years from now, some of the people that were here in the very beginning is the only reason why you and I are here today. We are here because they prayed, because they gave. I remember when I was in Michigan and we were giving, amen, and those uh, offerings and times that we were giving were also going towards starting these other churches in other places. So even though I was never here physically in Phoenix, my seed was. Yeah. Amen. So guess what, folks? When I showed up in Phoenix, I didn't show up with no harvest. I showed up with seed already in the ground. That's why you always obey what the Lord tells you to do when it comes to sowing. Because you may not be sowing for a need you have now. You may be sowing for your future. And what God is desiring to do, amen, when the time is right, praise God. Now, I believe that the time is here. The time is now, and I believe that as we speak, the next generation of leaders are emerging. Amen. Come on, like dough, you're rising. <laughs> Glory to God. You're rising up amongst the congregation, and you're saying that I am willing to be used by God to take what's going on now to a h and a whole nother level Amen. on the devil. <laughs> It's time to look at where you are now. It's time to look at the vision. It's time to look at God. What can I do in order to bring that vision to pass? It's time to assess and look at the different things around the ministry that may be lacking or may be missing. See, I, I don't feel... I don't feel like it's too much to ask of people to contribute to what God is doing. Come on. Amen. 
Why? Because when I sat in those seats, I didn't see it as you're asking for too much. If I was not willing to get out of that pew and help somebody else's vision, God never would have gave me my own. And see, the way that the kingdom works is that you've got to be faithful over that which is another man's before God will give you your own stuff. Now, I'm not saying that all of you are called to work for the church and things of that nature because you're not. As a matter of fact, the majority of you, your calling is out there. But you have an in-house call and also a call outside of the house. Yeah. Amen. 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 You're here to help make disciples. You're here to help do the work. Amen. You're out there also, amen, to win souls and to bring them into the kingdom of Almighty God. Amen. amen. And Romans tells us in verse, chapter 8, verse 19, that the earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes. Folks, how long will we keep them waiting? I'm saying not another day. Come on. Not another day. Come on. Not another day. Come on, somebody. Done. I'm done being lazy. I'm done being slothful. I'm done crying about how hard stuff is. I'm done throwing in the towel. I'm done giving up. I'm done saying it's impossible. I say that today. I'm the man of God. Today, you're the man of God. Today, you're the woman of God that God wants you to be. And I say that now, the army is stepping into its position and you cannot be stopped. One day you're going to get a hold of that, amen, and I'm going to say something like that, and like Mary, you're going to stand up and say, Behold the FCC of the Lord. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. If you study your Bible, the house of God was always attached to your personal house. Amen. Always. Amen. You look in Haggai. The Bible says the reason why they gathered much and it came to little. The reason why they drank but didn't have enough. The reason why they gathered but it was like they gathered and put into a bag with holes in it is because of the fact that while they took care of their house, the house of God lied waste. And I don't know about you. I'm not just saying this because I'm the pastor and my wife is the first lady. But as far as the Moors are concerned, this house will not lie waste. Amen. 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 I realize now I don't have to make the most to be the biggest giver. Come on. But listen to me, because one day, listen to me, he may not pay up every Friday. But when I stand up and give testimony of what God has done in our lives personally, don't hate on the harvest if you've never seen the seed. And here's my thing, if you don't like what you got going on now, understand that God gave you seed. Which means you can change it, folks. You got everything you need right now to go to the next level. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to give it. Now the ability to become a great leader, it begins with desire. The level of desire you have to grow in your leadership will determine how fast and how much you progress. Great leaders are not born great leaders. They become great leaders. Amen. Now the one thing I cannot do and you cannot do, you cannot give somebody else the desire to want to grow in their leadership ability. I can't give you the desire to want to get free. If you're bound by certain things in your life, I can't give you the desire to want to get free. I can give you good information. I can give you some word. I can give you the revelation God's given to me. I can, I can uh, if you can say it this way, regurgitate what God has deposited in my heart. But you know what I cannot do? I cannot go home with you and give you a desire for you to do something with what it is you receive. Amen. That's up to you. Amen. And how fast you grow and how much you progress has to do with the, de- the level of desire you have on the inside. You just get to the point. I'm just tired of going through. Fed up with it. Because here's my attitude, man. You know, you, you shouldn't have the same story year after year after year. And you know what happens a lot of times is that people have the same story year after year after year. Then they say, well, you know, I, I think I'm going to go to another church because I really ain't getting a whole lot there. Because I've been going through this for the last, you know, six years. And, uh, and I, I'm here every week, you know, I'm doing all this stuff. And it's amazing to me how people blame everybody else for their circumstances instead of getting the revelation of the fact that the only one that can stop you is you. Now, if God told you to leave, 
then, then listen to me. You need to get up out of here. You need to get up out of here quick. Lock. Why? Because you don't want to be out of the will of God trying to make the will of God happen. We love you enough. Listen to me. We love you. Amen. We want to see God's best for you. But we don't love you so much that we would rather keep you to ourselves than allow you to follow what you believe God is, in, is leading and guiding you to do. Amen. Now, th now, there is, of course, sometimes a maturity that comes, that has to come with hearing from God. Because yeah. sometimes people say <laughs> that God be speaking to them about stuff, and I'd be like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, help me. <laughs> and, and, and that's why, just like when we're born in this world, God gives us parents, and that's why God gives us spiritual parents. Yeah. To kind of help guide and direct and just to make sure that we're on course and we're on track as we grow in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Now, you cannot measure the readiness of a leader solely on their potential. Praise God. Or if I can say this way, or on their experience. Experience is helpful, but it is not a guarantee that a person is growing or ready for leadership. A person's potential simply gives you a glimpse into what could happen if a person is willing to work. Ask your neighbor on the side of you, are you willing to work? Ask somebody else, are you willing to work? Turn to three people behind you, ask them, all three of them. Say, are you willing to work? Come on, some of us need to change the prayer. We've been praying, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. And we need to adjust to what Paul prayed. And that is, God, your grace is sufficient for me. For your strength is made perfect in my weakness. If you enjoyed today's broadcast and would like to purchase or download messages by Pastor Sean R. Moore, please visit us on the web at www.fcc-phx.com backslash media. You can follow him on Twitter, join him on Facebook, and watch videos on YouTube. Join us next time as we continue to empower you to be your best.